Hey everybody, what's going on? This is Scott Shoemake. Welcome to my YouTube channel. If it's your first time here, um, well, just welcome. Uh, I do a lot of vlogging, but also something I've been wanting to do and I'm really excited about today is doing some stuff that involves uh, what I do for a living, my day job, and that is um, using these guys, like a lot. And uh, as a photographer, I shoot both film and I shoot digital. And so today, something beautiful happened on the internet, and that is that Mastin Labs, which is a preset maker, they make presets for Lightrooms, um, they released the Fuji Pushed Pack um, for Lightroom, new set of presets, and I'm so excited to try those out. And so today I'm gonna be doing a little review, um, a little tutorial, and just show you some of what it looks like when you're trying to match your digital photography to your film photography. Because sometimes you're like, Oh, I just want to shoot film and that's great but there's other times where you're like oh, I want to shoot digital because I need a low light or I need a video camera as well or it's just more convenient or I don't have the money to, to buy film right now and so presets for Lightroom are really really nice when you need that um, that film look you want that film look and that consistency across your work and so today we're going to talk about that a little bit and I'm going to show you some photos I'm not just going to show you like beautiful backlit California photos. Um, that's kind of what everybody does. They show their best stuff. And I'm gonna pick good ones, obviously. And I'll throw some backlit, beautiful California ones in there. Uh, but I wanna show you like different lighting conditions and how these presets work and manipulate the digital photos in different lighting situations. So we're gonna show you some, some editorial, some travel, some wedding, some portrait, just some different stuff in different lighting conditions. So like blown out, overexposed, and then like underexposed and muddy and um, different lighting like candlelit or inside of a uh, you know a home with like incandescent lighting and how that looks so anyway um, let's jump into the computer and uh, and see what these things look like see how uh, see how they did I'm pretty stoked about it Kirk's one of my uh, one of my favorite dudes in the photography industry and I love what he's doing at Maston Labs so um, let's go Okay, so here we are, we're back in Lightroom, um, Adobe CC, Lightroom, whatever you call it. Anyway, uh, this is my photo editing suite, and as you can see, we've imported 26, I don't have my glasses on, 26 of uh, these photos, and um, they're anywhere from something that's in the nighttime, just kind of like natural light, high ISO, to something that's like underexposed, candlelit, you got some editorial stuff here. You got one that's like completely blown out. I'm actually shooting this dude's wedding in a few weeks. You got some travel photos. You've got some food, overexposed, underexposed. You got some uh, beautiful simple backgrounds. We'll see how that looks. Nice backlight, um, kind of blown out skies. It was actually a little hazy, so it's probably more smoke in the air than anything. Um, beautiful California golden light. And then you've got some more underexposed, you've got some deep rich colors. So anyway, I just wanted to say that I'm putting a full spectrum of photos in here for you guys to check out. Um, but let's jump into the development panel. And as you can see, I've got um, some, definitely uh, some Mastin Labs presets already in here. Um, but these guys are the ones that I want to focus on today. So let's find the Sony ones. Those guys are going to be right there. And uh, yeah, it looks like you've got um, a nice little breakdown. I like how I like how Kirk did that. That's uh, that's that's pretty cool. Um, breaks it down in between film and um, and then tone. And there's lens correction and then grain at the bottom too. So uh, the first photo we have is from one of my favorite weddings ever. Um, I just happened to have the raw file on my hard drive that I had plugged in. So um, threw this one in here and let's see if you look up in the upper left hand corner right here, you'll see uh, like a little quick, um, I think they call it a smart preview of what each one looks like. So here is Fuji 400H plus one SP and then blue plus two makes it nice and warm and then plus two blue kind of tones it down. And then here's a Fuji 160, which um, is actually a great film too. And I really like the uh, the plus one look on that Fuji 160. And look how beautiful that just uh, went with with like one click. And um, it may have got a little bit red, so you know you can 
you can pull down the uh, the tint a little bit maybe that was a little too much but somewhere in there throw a little bit of warmth in there um, one of the things I love about Mastin Labs is there's this like trend right now to make everything like kind of these zombie tones of like weird like goldeny yellow skin and I like natural like to me this looks natural this looks like what your eye is going to see when you are in this setting right here um, and check the cl clipping path there's really nothing blown out I see one little red light right there one red light right there um, nothing's really really blown out but anyway um, that is Fuji 160 on on that photo and that looks pretty stinking awesome and we'll throw some medium format grain on there I love grain on my photos and yeah so here's the before and after um, pretty stinking magical I love it I love it okay so here's an interesting photo um, this one to be honest, I don't even know if it, I would probably go black and white with it, but I was like, let's throw this in there and just see what it looks like in the push pack. We're obviously going to have to push a bunch of light into it, um, but let's see what it does to the tones. And I immediately, when I was scrolling through these, I was like, oh my goodness, I love this. And let's, uh, let's bump some light in there. Let's pull some of the, the red tone out of there and just get this photo looking fantastic um, look at that you guys do you love that I kinda kinda dig that and you can always come in here mess around with curves it already has a little bit of a J curve you can pull darks out you can go you know something like that and um, you know I don't mess with uh, with clarity too much but you can throw in a little bit of a bump and then um, throw some medium format grain on top of it and like these are to me this is like what film looks like this is what a film photo would look like if you uh, if you were shooting film and pushing like say you had a Fuji 400h and you pushed it a stop this is like Kurt if you're listening dude this is what it would look like and I love that so um, let's move on here's a, a candlelit reception um, they're toasting as you can see right here and let's scroll through and see what these are going to do to the photo oh my goodness these look so good um, again a little warm because you've got the candlelight and you don't want to go too blue but you can pull some reds and um, and, and you can always go down into your hues and your saturations and your luminance and all that and um, you can you can tweak these to make them uh, get them exactly where you want them and mess around with the orange levels and kind of neutral out the tones a little bit if you want but um, look how good that is you guys that those are like really what the tones look like that night when everything is candlelit. We'll throw some medium format grain on there. Um, as you can see, this was shot on a Canon. This is back when I was on a Canon, Canon system on an 85 1.4. That would be the, or I was shooting at 1.4. I'm not sure if this was the 85 L or the 85 Zeiss because um, I've shot both of them. But this is a 3200. Um, and when you throw that medium format grain on there, look how good it looks. It just uh, it gives it that filmic look, and that's what we're really shooting for. Here's one indoors with some weird like incandescent light, and like you guys look at one click. And obviously we wanna we wanna tweak around some of these some of these tones. Um, and this one I actually like it a little more moody. And uh, look how good that looks, you guys just just a few clicks right there and uh, one thing if you're in Lightroom and you don't have like some keystrokes already buried in there to little little shortcuts and stuff um, you should definitely do that but let's move on okay here's something this light is uh, this is an editorial shoot I did in New York City um, just really like kinda flat window light um, just wanted something really clean looking um, but look look at the bump oh wait let's go back I wanna show you before and after on this and um, just show you how like you know it just everything just pops a little bit a little bit more on there um, but anyway let's go back to this photo whoops let's go back to this photo and let's look at how these presets are popping you guys love it love it love it love it that 
it just it just looks like film you guys it just looks like film I'm not having to mess with sliders um, we can throw some medium format grain on there and um, these skin tones just look so natural you guys they just look so natural and um, you can always throw a little more light on there you can take it down a little bit you can do whatever um, but man they just look so good here's a before and after right it just looks it's filmy you guys it's totally uh it's filmy so um here's the the groom from the editorial shoot and um let's uh let's see what we can do here really really liking this look how moody that is with the window light um throw some medium format grain and and boom um I don't know. I don't like to sit down and try and build my own presets and try, I, you know, I'll tweak these maybe a little bit to my liking, but you guys, I've never seen anything like out of the box that is so, so stinking good. Um, and you can just hover your, hover your cursor kind of over these and, um, and just get them where you want and, and dial them in. And it looks like you're shooting film. Like this is cinematic to me. This, um, this looks like something that I would see uh, come out of a movie camera shot on film. So, um, anyway, how easy it is. Boom. One click. And I haven't touched anything. And it looks great. I would probably warm that up a little bit. Turn the reds down a little bit. Um, anyhow. All right. Shooting this guy's wedding in a few weeks. Kind of excited about it. He's a, a filmmaker in L.A. And uh, we were actually in Bali on this trip shooting a wedding together. And, uh, you know, we are just messing around with cameras on the beach at Padang Padang. And uh, I had these on a hard drive. And I'm like, dude, I don't even know if I ever gave him these photos. So, Seth, if you're watching this, if I didn't give you these photos, dude, I'm so sorry. Anyway, look at that, you guys. Two clicks. Three clicks. Done. And, uh medium format grain boom <laughs> I'm, I'm just having I'm having too much fun uh, over here okay here's one that's a little blown out a little overexposed so let's see what things look like when you've got something overexposed I really like that first one um, or was it the second one I think it was that first one and um, let's just take down the exposure a little bit let's just go down a little bit um, bring back some of the highlights and then I'm going to bring back a few more of the highlights and um, then I would probably mess around with the luminance on the red a little bit just out of his face and uh, medium format grain and voila see how much this pops compared to how flat I know you're dealing with raw images so they're gonna be flat but um, this just has that film three-dimensional pop look to it here's one that would be like uh, underexposed and so one thing I'm always interested in looking at when I'm dealing with photos um, in editing in Lightroom is like while I'm shooting what does it make them look like when they're when they're underexposed overexposed how does it affect the preset and so three clicks and boom you've got that so there you go see how that grain just kind of completes the photo love it love it so good um, these these things are just killing it um, there's a little travel photo a little Balinese cow out there um, really like that first one so we're gonna go with that boom let's roll okay food photos hopefully we have some food photographers out there that can critique my work a little bit um, we're just going to crop in a little bit on this uh, charcuterie board and hope I said that right. <laughs> um, I'm really digging the, the 160. So this is a little overexposed. So we're going to bump that down a little bit. Um, going to bring some yellows out of there. Bring the temp down a little bit. And um, I always like to, to pull the highlights in just a little bit. Make sure nothing's clipping. If you got one spot like that on a whole photo clipping you're, you're pretty good especially if you're printing and um, yeah give it a little bit more clarity drop the blacks a little bit and uh, look at this you guys oh grain boom 
Isn't that amazing? Some of you guys are like, you're telling all your secrets, Scott? Really? I mean, other people are going to do it too, but, you know. Okay, so here is what I would say is something that the exposures is really, really good for these presets. You see how easily transition the exposure is? Um, I mean, maybe one click and exposure, some clarity and some blacks, and um, something like that. And then uh, throw some medium format grain in there, and voila. All right, so let's uh, let's go with the more little like simple look here. Um, I love these. I love how this photo is actually bringing some um, a little bit of a magenta tint to it, and really digging that. And we'll just kind of straighten that out a little bit. Um, isn't that amazing? Little grain. And again, you can always tweak and customize um, these presets to your liking. So, how cool is that? All right, so let's go something, uh, something a little backlit. They're just uh, dancing out here, having some fun, and. From what I'm seeing, this is where the magic really happens in these presets is when you have stuff that's like a little bit underexposed, you're trying to retain like highlights and, um, and different things like that. Um, if you're a wedding filmmaker, you might recognize these guys. They're, uh, they're Love Spun Films celebrating their 20th wedding anniversary. I know they don't look like they can uh, have been married for 20 years, but look at those tones, you guys. Ah! just amazing so let's let's do another one all right walking off into the sunset um, and these just really look good and I would put a little bit of uh, exposure back into that pull some of the reds out and um, yeah just it brings this like I said a three-dimensional look to it um, once again you're just you're basically just doing one or two clicks and boom your photo is done and you're moving on and you're not spending all this time trying to pull sliders around how cool is that how amazing is that this one's really underexposed I think I was trying to like just retain some of these highlights um, in post I would probably pull some of these uh, little flyaway hairs out but um, this one's really ex underexposed and I wanted to see what it would look like. I have a preset that's already kind of like built for photos that are underexposed like this. Um, and so we're just going to kind of test and tweak a little bit and see how much we can get this to look amazing. Throw some medium format grain in there. And um, you guys, um, I don't know how many of you already shoot film, but if you do shoot film, you kind of know that you'll uh, you'll be right here with me just being like, oh my goodness, Scott, that looks just like film. And um, here, what, what I did here is just a little quick little shortcut. I um, did a keystroke, I built in a keystroke to sync settings. And so boom, now you have your settings synced right here and you can just transfer things right over to the next photo. Um, anyway, beautiful, beautiful presets here, Kirk. Loving everything about them. And um, let's see, I think I'll have one more after this. Medium format grain. And then um, let's just push some light in here and see what that looks like. Pull the darks and the shadows out a little bit. And look at these tones, you guys before after so what I'm seeing so far is that these are looking really good underexposed um, and pushing light in I'm guessing that's kind of what they were meant for um, you get a live view here of what they're gonna look like as you edit um, which that'll be kind of cool so um, what I'm seeing is that if you shoot overexposed uh, they look great but if you shoot underexposed they look amazing and um, Man, I've never seen 
presets that make your photos look as much like film as these. These are something special and I uh, hope you guys have enjoyed this. Hope you uh, have learned something from it. Maybe, maybe pulled something out of it and I hope you guys enjoy it. So uh, that is Mastin Labs uh, Lightroom presets. Uh, hopefully I'll have an affiliate link for you below, um, but you can kind of just go through and see. And if I don't have an affiliate link, still go ahead and support them. The, they're an amazing company. Kirk's a great guy doing some awesome things. And uh, as you can see, as these buffer through, um, man, the, the presets really, really make a big difference. So uh, that's all for today, folks. Make sure and hit subscribe. Make sure and click that like button. And uh, we'll see you, see you in the few. If you have any questions, um, make sure and post those below. I will answer them. I get back to every, pretty much everybody on here. And uh, make sure and post those below. Camera giveaway is coming. It's coming. It's coming. Um, I've actually got a little gorilla pod on the way. That's going to be a part of that. So I've been kind of waiting on that. But anyway, it's coming soon. We'll see you guys.